You gotta talk to me sometime! I stop! Come away from the door! Hack it in! I've gotta to talk to her! Just calm down! Calm it down! Alright, alright. Alright, George? Yeah. If the police can open the door! Where's Leslie? Just shut it. She doesn't want to see you, Ian. But I don't want to hurt her. I told you to shut it. Can you tell us what this is all about? She really doesn't want him near her. Can I come in? I'll stay out here with him, Debbie. Do you live here, Miss... Um... Kingston. Jane Kingston. No, this is Leslie's place. I'm a friend. Are you, Leslie? Do you know the man outside? He called you by your name. Ian's the father of Leslie's children. Does he live here? No. They're separated. Can you tell me what this dispute is all about? Their youngest child. Josh. And where is Josh? He's dead. I haven't seen her since it happened. You do know you're under caution. Don't have to say anything, Mr Chaplin. No, I wasn't going to hurt her. I just haven't been able to speak to her. She just disappeared after it happened three weeks ago. She didn't even come to the funeral. Your little boy's name was Josh, yeah? yeah he died when he drank Leslie's methadone. Leslie's a registered addict, is she? Yeah, but she, she thinks it's all her fault. She was so ashamed she just disappeared. But she's got to speak to me sometime, hasn't she? Well, perhaps she's not ready yet. But I'm supposed to sit around and wait while she's out dealing. I'm sorry, what did you say? Our son's dead and she's turned into a drug dealer. Yeah, okay mate, I've got that. Thanks. Sarge, you investigated the Josh Chaplin case, didn't you? The little boy who died after swallowing the methadone? Yeah, sadly, why? We've just arrested his father, Ian. He was around Leslie's flat causing mayhem. But I heard Leslie had disappeared. Well, she's back now and according to Ian, she's dealing. She's a registered addict. She can get all she needs on prescription. Well, that's what he said. Probably wants his pound of flesh. Better have a chat. The little boy's death wasn't suspicious, was it? Nah, just a tragic accident. Dad leaves the two kids with grandmother for a week while he's off in Europe driving an HGV. She invites Leslie for the weekend. Well, how did Josh get hold of the methadone? Well, Leslie brought it with her, puts it in the fridge. Josh opens the door, sees what he thinks is a fizzy drink and... So you say Leslie's dealing? Yeah. What kind of stuff? Smack, methadone, dexedrine, temazepam. Why are you grassing on her? Do you feel it's a way of getting back at her? No. I mean, she wasn't actually there when the tragedy happened, was she? Unfortunately, it was your mum who was looking after the kids, who nodded off when Josh went to the fridge. Yes, I know. Y you don't <laughs> Was it your mother who told you about this? No. It's Jane. That's the woman who was with her this morning. Jane's her best friend. She cares about Leslie. She says she's going crazy, that she's injecting up to three amps of meth a day. There you go. Mr Chaplin, it might be a good idea to stay away from Leslie's flat. Next time she might press charges. Well, she's got to speak to me sometime, you know. You're really not giving up on her, are you? Well, Leslie's the mother of our kids. We still have a daughter, Sarah. She doesn't want to see her mother dead from an overdose. If I was a father, I'd want to kill her. Junkies shouldn't be allowed near their kids. Right, three years ago, Leslie hadn't even touched drugs. Oh, here we go. Sub story time. Well, she got involved in the fashion business, doing some modelling, doing very nicely for herself. Only trouble was, heroin was back on the scene in a big way. So she threw away a decent career for a quick thrill. That's what I like about you, Rod, that incisive understanding of the human psyche. Well, Sergeant, with respect, if you are so sympathetic, why are we persecuting this woman? We're not persecuting her, Rod. We're acting on information received. Oh, come on. She's got a death wish and we're Objective there to save Objective three of the Metropolitan Police is to get drugs off the street. Remember? Well, it looks like we can start now, then. Little fool. Leslie? Yeah. Bit blatant, isn't it? Come on. Get him, Rod. Oi! Oi! Hello, Leslie. How have you been? Dear Staley, Sonel. You remember me? I came up to the hospital to see you. How are you? I'm going to have to have a look in your bag. Lost him. <clears throat> you want to get yourself in shape, Rod? 
of these. Dexedrina, describe. Since when have you been called John Murphy? I'm sorry, Leslie. I'm arresting you for intent to supply a controlled Please drug. Leave me alone. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which should later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Should we have a quick shift around your flat? Come on, love. Rod? Yeah. yeah. Why are you after me? What are you looking for? Is it about what happened? To Josh. This is all in a day's work. I have nothing against you, Leslie. Sarge? There you go. Found this lot in the fridge. That's nothing. It's only half a week's prescription. What, 20 ampoules of methadone? Tina Jones. Who told you about me? Someone who's worried about your welfare. No one's worried about my welfare. You nicked Ian earlier today. He didn't tell you. You had no idea, I doubt. So you admit dealing? Who cares? I may as well be dead. Come on, Leslie. Sarge? You got a little bag on you or something? So tell us how you got this stuff. And then, if you like, we refer you to a counsellor. You think I want to face reality? Leslie, you need help. Who cares? Ian cares. He wants to help. Well, he's an idiot. Scratching around, driving for a living. He had a good job once, and a house. I spent all his money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spare us a soap opera, will you? Tell us who your supplier is. It's prescribed. No, four amps of methadone are prescribed to you. The rest are prescribed to other people. So, who are Tina Jones, John Murphy, and James Williams? Junkies, I don't know. So how have you got their drugs? <laughs> OK, interview suspended at 10.41. Bob? I can't go in there. Come on, Leslie. How long do I have to be in there? As long as it takes. Listen, Leslie, is there anything else you want to tell us? I can't. Come on. Come on. Is she all right? She's for the moment. So what are we going to do now? The prescribed drugs all came from the same chemist, Crownson's. We'll check him out. It don't take too long. If she's admitted to dealing, I want to charge her and want her out of here. I don't want to string her out. Well, it's par for the course when you arrest a junkie, such. If she's withdrawn and she wants a doctor, that's one if thing. If she but... needs a doctor, Bob, by all means call her one. There's no reason to put her through the mill. Cheers. You get a lot of addicts in, Mr. Crownson. Quite a few. There's three of us in Sun Hill who deal with the majority. These three all came in this morning. Tina Jones, James Williams, John Murphy. Do you know them? Not really. We get so many in here. Murphy's an Irishman. Figures. Could be about 50 years old. I can't place the other two. Does the name Leslie Humphreys mean anything to you? I think she came in this morning. Uh, yes, look. She seems to be in possession of these other addicts' drugs. Well, that's not unusual, I'm afraid. Some of them come in for their prescriptions and sell half the stuff on the street. There's nothing we can do about it. We have to dispense what the doctors prescribe. If the addicts are selling, then that's a police matter. You don't say. All of these prescriptions come from the same doctor. That's a bit of a coincidence, isn't it? Not at all. Dr Goshawk runs a drugs treatment clinic two afternoons a week. Do you know him? Her. No, not personally. I know of her. She's well known for her fight against drug addiction. And she'd have the addresses of these patients? Presumably, yes. A room full of junkies before my tea. Just what I need. Dr. Gosso, are with somebody? Yes, I'm afraid she is. We'll need to see her as soon as she's finished. Excuse me, mate. There's a queue. Well, you'll have to wait. DS Daly, son ill. Afraid it's you'll have to wait, mate. Dr. Goshawk? Yes? DS Daly, son ill. Can we have a chat? Better come through. We'll get straight to the point. Leslie Humphreys. We made some inquiries when her child died. I remember, yes. Looks like we've got another problem. 
Seems that Leslie's been buying drugs on the street from other patients of yours. John Murphy, Tina Jones, James Williams. Is this common practice? That goes on, but I don't know how common it is. I wouldn't have thought Leslie would be one to do it. Well, surely addicts don't sell prescribed drugs unless they've got a surplus. I'm afraid they do. Some of them go without, selling maybe a quarter of their prescription to pay the fees. Fees? Yes, this is a private clinic. I run a private drugs clinic two afternoons a week. Can't you prescribe on the NHS? I prescribe injectable methadone for addicts trying to get off heroin. Very rare to get injectable methadone on the NHS. They use DTF, which is a methadone mixture taken orally. It's not very effective. Most people on DTF go back to buying street drugs. Leslie's child drank DTF. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I was away at the time. Leslie couldn't get a prescription from me. If she'd had ampoules in her fridge instead of methadone mixture, that child would never have mistaken it for a soft drink and might still be alive. Leslie's on 200 milligrams a day. Is that a lot? Not in her case. Depends on your tolerance. Look, Sergeant, it's my professional opinion that this addict needs 200 milligrams per day of injectable methadone. Now, of all times, she's just been through a terrible tragedy. We know. If she doesn't get the correct dose from me, she'll go back to buying heroin on the streets. She'll have to subsidise that through crime or prostitution. Which means even more problems for us. We'll need the addresses of these patients of yours, Dr Gossog. Patient confidentiality, Sergeant. They've been dealing in prescribed drugs, Doctor. That's illegal. You all right? Do you want something? Yeah, but I can't tell you anything else. What do you mean? I was told you couldn't have a doctor until he gave them the information that they needed. This is not the dark ages. If you're sick, you get a doctor. Are you strung out? Right, I'll phone for one. You all think I should be dead? That's not true. I tried. I tried so hard at first to come off it, but when it's there, you know... What's there? When you're registered, it's always available. Yeah. I'll get you a doctor. There you go, Rod. Cheers. You know, this is a big case, isn't it? Sad little addicts selling their staff to pay for their prescriptions. Clear up is clear up, Rod. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mustn't forget the clear up, mate. Did you notice the junkies at the surgery? Yeah? Why? Yeah, but did you notice how none of them were there when we came out? Yes. One snip of the old bill and they just disappeared, don't they? So is that what you call the clear off rate? <clears throat> Dear Staley. Hello, Jeff. Where are you? Oh, you're coming back in. Good, good. I am glad. Yeah, there's somebody here who wants a word. Well, make a complaint, actually. Gov, I believe you've already met DC McGovern at Dr. Goshawk's. Some overzealous, weren't you, mate? What? Bit of a cock up, I'm afraid. You see, DC McGovern is a test purchaser for area drugs and the chemist inspection unit. And he was just about to see what he could get out of Goshawk when you went in with your size 11s. I was all wired and ready to go in. Goshawk was flagged, Jeff. You should have checked the pool. Flagged for what? Well, we reckon Goshawk's over prescribing. Well, technically it's not illegal, but it is unethical. Well, if it's not illegal... But she could be committing an offence somewhere along the line. See, I was there to see if she would prescribe Class A drugs without examining me first. It never occurred to me she might be flagged, Gov. Jeff, there was a memo circulating last week. And one of the items on the agenda emphasised the need for pool checks. Well, you've alerted Goshawk. She's not going to do anything to arouse suspicion now. See, that's the whole operation down the chute. You know, it's virtually impossible to prove over-prescribing at the best of times without your colleagues messing up for you. Uh, can I buy you a drink? 350 grand? That is outrageous. Well, I've come across doctors with 300-odd addicts on their books. You take into account the initial consultation fee of, say, 70 to 80 quid and 25 for each prescription. We could easily earn that amount in a year. What about Goshawk? Well, she's not in that league, but she's got enough to double her income. And these doctors over-prescribe because they know the addicts will sell a surplus on the street so they can pay their fees. What's legalised drug dealing? So, how common is it? It's not an epidemic, but it happens. Goshawk says if she doesn't prescribe enough, the junkies just go back and buy the smack on the street. Well, that's why we find it so frustrating. 
See the doctors stand up in court and say they know best. Well, they're the professionals and everybody believes them. Anyway, Dave, sorry for stitching up the operation. I forget it, Sarge. We'd have done a check, but we went straight from the chemist to Gossauks. Which chemist is that? Ken Crownson, Hoxton Road. He's been dispensing a lot of Gossauks prescriptions. I don't know anything about him. Well, there's no reason he should. Everything's above board. Well, if he's dispensing 200 mil a day to your prisoner, and he hasn't even queried a good doctor, well, he could well be dodgy. 200 milligrams. Is that a lot? Well, not much. Given 50 would kill most mortals. Rod, check the addresses Gossauk gave us. Take Liz with you. I'll take Dave. We'll have another word with Leslie. Yeah. She should just be a bit cooking by now. Bob, need to speak to Leslie. Uh, yeah, for me, just giving her an armful. Can't interview her now. Well, you could have waited. Beg your pardon? We'll stand the practice. Well, that's when you get addicts to turn into informers, when they need a fix. But you lot going soft at Sunhill. Have you been undercover so long you've forgotten what a custody officer's duty is? Well? That woman's four-year-old son died three weeks ago. How much more do you want to put her through? Come on, Dave. We'll sit this one out for a bit. We'll come back later, Bob. Jeff. A bit posh for a junkie, isn't it? Don't hold your breath. Eh? Hey? Well, the last address didn't exist. What makes you think this place will be all right? Maybe James Williams has a good job. Oh, yeah. So why is he so half the stash he gets from the chemist, then? Yes? Mr Williams? Sorry? Oh, I'm looking for Mr James Williams. No, no, you come to the wrong house. My name's Kavanagh. Oh, I'm not buying anything. I have to go to DC State or something. I'm sorry for the trouble. Sergeant's Liz. John Murphy's address didn't exist. James Williams doesn't live at his address, so I don't think we'll bother with Tina Jones. Hang on, Liz. Dave, the addresses are bogus. Oh, surprise, surprise. Why don't you go back to Goshawks? Tell her the addresses are false. Ask her if all her addicts give false addresses. Put some pressure on her. See what happens. And she knows we're on to her. We might as well scare her. Liz, tell Rod to meet me at the doctor's surgery. You can get yourself back here. OK, love, thanks. Is this going to take long? I do have a surgery to run. We just need to know why your patients have given you false addresses. Do you have any idea? Well, maybe they're wanted by the police. They're drug addicts. It wouldn't be unheard of. And do all your addicts give bogus addresses? I don't know. It's not for me to check them out. Of course not. We'll need the addresses of your other patients as well, Doctor. I'm sorry, that's confidential. We'll get a warrant. You've no justification for getting no, a warrant. Get you can't stop me! What is it? I want what? to talk to you. What are you doing here? We might ask you the same thing. It's her fault! My kid is oh, dead! Oh, darling! Right. She's Leslie's supplier. She prescribes too much. You do realise that, don't you? This is absurd. Let us deal with this. I brought Leslie here two years ago. Cost me a fortune! And for what? This! This! This is rubbish! You said you'd have a clean in six months! You liar! My kid is dead because of you! Get him out of here, Rod. I'm arresting you for criminal damage. Me? It should be her you're nicking. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention one question, something you later rely on in court. You'll be pressing any charges? Any reason why I shouldn't? I can think of one or two. Yeah, right, Rod. Why don't you sit him over there? Mm. Yeah. Jane told me about Gossel. Jane? One of Leslie's friends. That's hearsay. We can't prove anything. Yeah, doctor should be put away. Well, I agree with you, Ian. But there's nothing we can do. I mean, Leslie won't tell us anything. Well, let me have a go. Well, maybe I can tell her it's in her best interest to say what she knows. Bob? All right. We're not going to do it in the cell. If she wants to do it, we'll do it out here in case the wheel comes off. Leslie, we've got Ian here. He wants to talk to you. He wants to help. What? Just speak to him. I don't want to talk to him. Please, Leslie, just give it a go. Prison, 
But you'll get a lighter sentence, and when, when you're in there, you can get off the stuff. Yeah, they don't do drugs in prison. Look, I want you back, Les. Sarah wants her mother. But you, you, you've got to get clean. I don't believe you mean that. They want you to say it. That's not true. I want you home. You should hate me. Well, I, I don't. <laughs> Just tell the police the truth. He said he might hurt Sarah if I told anyone. He? No one's going to hurt Sarah. Who's he? Crownson, the chemist. What was that? Crownson's my supplier. You sure about that? Yes. I walked in there one day and he offered to sell me drugs under the counter. And what about Gosshawk? The doctor, she has nothing to do with it. Excuse me, Leslie. Dave. Well, that's a turn up. Not if she's telling the truth. I think she is. So we've been barking up the wrong tree? Yeah, well, I have. Never mind. Get one in the mall, eh? OK, Leslie, we're going to charge you get you out of here. OK, over here. Rod, will you take Ian out? No, 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 I want to wait. But you've been cautioned you're not a prisoner anymore. I'll put him in the front office. Go. I'll be off then, Sarge. Let us know how you got on with Crownson. OK. No hard feelings? No, none. I'm sorry you didn't get Gossawk. Forget it. Anything turn up? Ah, the prisoner fingered a bent chemist. Not what you were hoping for? No, not exactly. You off? Yeah, sort of. So, who would I speak to around here if I wanted to borrow a couple of uniform blokes? Come with me. Nice part of the world to live in, if you can afford it. The dealers make a lot of money, Sarge. Still got to prove it, though. If he's banging out drugs under the counter, there'll be a discrepancy in the books. Hello again, Mr. Crownson. Your staff told us your address. I'm a bit busy. Do you mind if we come in? It's not really convenient. Sure, it's not. Excuse me. Off on holiday. I thought I was due a break. Yes, work's been a bit hectic lately. Well, I'm afraid it'll have to wait. I'm arresting you for illegally selling drugs. What? You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Here's your coat. If you shut up, just please move inside. Look, I'll cooperate in any way you like. Yeah. This is a misunderstanding, after all. Although I should probably see my solicitor. What's she doing here? What's she been saying? I don't know what you're talking about. Dave. What's going on? I have nectar. Well, I thought she was out of the frame. Well, the chemist couldn't be operating on his own, could he? Hey. Well, once Leslie fingered him, I had to ask where did he get the prescriptions to cover the drugs he was selling. Doctor? Yeah. And well, the beauty of it is we can nick her for that. Can we prove it? Oh, with Leslie we can. So why didn't you tell me you were nicking her? Well, I know how you like surprises. 